Good morning, this is Colin Clark. I did our breaking defense here at the Raytheon Chalet at the Paris Air Show on day two. It's a pretty day, and we're here with Dave Wasegrass, president of the uh, unit at Raytheon that oversees all things cyber, and oh. Todd Prober, who is also a cyber guy and Mr. Multi-Domain at Raytheon. So, guys, uh, I understand you've got some news for us, but uh, tell us a bit more about uh, why Raytheon is putting so much emphasis on cyber? Well, you know, Colin, we spoke a couple of years ago when you asked basically the same question. So, uh, without getting into a lot of history, the last few years there's been a lot of activity in the cyber space, generally speaking. A lot of very well-known breaches in many, many different industries. Uh, the DOD in particular has taken a really focused look and put in a lot of effort and has now done, my opinion, an excellent job in moving cyber resiliency forward. And that's really what we wanted to talk about. Uh, I think going back a few years, there was a lot of talk and not a lot of action. Uh, but I would say more recently, and in particular since we've last been here a couple of years ago, uh, the DOD, broadly speaking, has done an excellent job in focusing on that area, and we have a lot to bring to that, and it's one of our core capabilities. Uh, Todd has uh, recently, his business has recently been awarded some uh, new contracts, and we wanted to talk a little bit about that. So, Todd? Yeah, so to expound on what Dave said, um, the 2016 ND NDAA struck 2019 as the year for all weapon systems to be assessed for cyber vulnerabilities. Um, what we, we talked about last year, Global Hawk and the ground systems uh, and the hardening efforts we did there. Uh, what, what we got approval to talk about today is we've been working with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, we've got an, an ongoing program uh, to help evaluate the cyber resiliency on the F-15 and on the C-130. So uh, working with them to uh, first do vulnerability assessments and then uh, as those assessments go, uh, go forward, uh, work to, to remediate anything that we see in those assessments. Now, I know you can't give us classified details, but can you give uh, our uh, listeners some idea as to how you approach this for an airplane? Because I don't think that many people know that airplanes can be hacked effectively. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Aviation is a very unique environment. So if you think about it, uh, networks are, are something that everybody has to deal with, be it the financial uh, markets, be it uh, medical, or certainly defense. But an airplane is unique. It's a, it's a platform uh, outside of those networks, but it's a flying network in and of itself. Uh, so first and foremost, we look at the network on the plane itself and all the various computers that comprise of that network. But maybe more importantly, we look at all the touch points that come into that airplane. Now, by touch points, you mean? Well, so for example, uh, let's let's take it to something that everybody can get their head around. Uh, when you take your car into a dealership, what's the first thing they do? They plug a diagnostic system into the car's computers to evaluate what's happened within the car. Mm -hmm. Well, that diagnostic, that plug-in of that, that maintenance action is a cyber vector that could potentially impose uh, some sort of threat into that vehicle. Much the same on an airplane. And if you look at a military airplane, there's all the maintenance activities that go along with that. But now we have smart weapons, those all plug in. Uh, the pilot, he or she climbs into the cockpit with an electronic flight bag, with a helmet monitor display. Again, all sorts of plug-in points to that airframe. So all of these are potential threat vectors that we're concerned about. And can you give us an idea how large the contracts are? No, we can't. Okay, but let me help out Fair here. Enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But, um, but something else I want to mention is, uh, I think Todd explained that very, very well. There are multiple other platforms where we have been contracted to do vulnerability assessments, and not only on the platform, but on what I would call the broader ecosystem, which would involve everything around the maintenance side and the supply chain. Can you give us an idea of the overall uh, business involved here on the defense side for you? Uh, how, how much is flowing in the last, say, 18 months? When you say flowing in terms of dollars, in terms dollars, of programs, yes. in terms of, well, we don't, we don't get that specific on the amount of, of uh, on the values of what some of these contracts are, either Tens individually. Of millions, hundreds? It, it, it's, it's, it's in the hundreds of millions overall. Uh, but now I'm talking broadly around the entire business. So l let me give you just a, a really good example that has been talked about publicly, our uh, GPS OCX system, the ground system that's going to control 
the new generation of GPS satellites. It's the most cyber resilient ground system ever delivered to the U.S. Air Force for space-based satellites. And uh, that's something we are using and we're leveraging everything that we learned there, us and the Air Force, onto similar type of systems and similar type of platforms. Okay, this is Colin Clark, editor of Breaking Defense.